Happy Sauce! I'm Jake, and I've been thinking a lot about mutation. Not just because X-Men Apocalypse is coming out, but because I am a mutant. Well, at least part of me is. Cancer is a mutation of a cell. Specifically, the DNA inside the cell is damaged. That cell doesn't stop dividing and growing and growing faster and faster until we get a lump of cancer cells like this. A tumor. My tumor. Unfortunately, it didn't lead to me having any enhanced special abilities like mutations do in the world of X-Men. But that didn't stop me from trying. I had to go to eight weeks of radiation therapy. And if I've learned anything from comics, is that exposure to radiation should have at least given me some sort of physically mutated powers. It didn't. But what I did find interesting is that we use radiation to cure cancer. Yet radiation also causes it. Non-ionizing radiation like infrared, microwave, or radio waves don't cause tissue damage. But ionizing radiation, gamma rays, x-rays, and ultraviolet light can, and when it does, it damages DNA. Sometimes that damage is repaired and nothing changes. Other times the damage is not repaired and the damaged cell dies. Occasionally the damage is not repaired but the cell lives on with mutated DNA. The aim of radiation therapy is to expose just the affected area to so much radiation, about 10,000 times the normal amount, that it kills every cell. Since you started watching this video, you've had at least seven instances of DNA damage. And by the end of the day, you'll have had over 10,000. The good news is that your cells usually fix it, if the cell just doesn't die first. But mutations happen all the time. A human has an average of 60 at birth, and a lot of them developed over centuries. For example, originally we all had brown eyes. Six to 10,000 years ago, a genetic mutation caused one person to have blue eyes. And they're the one common ancestor for everyone with blue eyes today. The truth is we are all mutants. However, some are more mutant than others. Timothy Dreyer has incredibly dense bones due to a disease called sclerosteosis. Because of a specific mutation in the sclerostin gene, Timothy and around 100 other people have such thick bones, out of 60 patients surveyed, none had ever broken one despite living normal, active lives. And one had even been hit by a car. Then you have someone like Michael Lotito, who we've talked about before, that was able to eat things like 18 bikes, 15 shopping carts, seven televisions, and one Cessna airplane. This was because of two things. One, a disease called pica, where you have the urge to eat inedible objects, and two, because of a mutation that made his stomach lining twice as thick as an average person's. But let's talk about pain. Eating something like a bicycle would probably hurt going down, even if broken in to small pieces. And that's where the mutation CIP comes in, congenital insensitivity to pain. As the name suggests, it is a condition where the person cannot feel physical pain. There is a fantastic New York Times article about a girl named Ashlyn Blocker who has CIP and it chronicles how she and her family live with it. They talk about how Ashlyn dropped a spoon into a pot of boiling water and then she stuck her hand in to retrieve it. She didn't feel anything but just because you can't feel it doesn't mean it can't cause permanent damage. For example, take Stephen Pete who discusses how his parents discovered he had it. My parents realized I couldn't feel pain when I was a toddler and chewed off half of my tongue. They then took me to a doctor and the doctor ran a series of tests to confirm that I had this condition. Let's imagine something. Let's imagine we can't feel pain. I'm sure it's a fantasy that most of us have had before, but think about what it would actually be like. Stephen Pete has done so much damage to his left leg without knowing that he can't walk properly anymore. Or what if you had an internal injury? How would you ever know? Timothy Dreyer might never break a bone because of sclerosteosis, but the increased pressure on his skull could cause instantaneous death. And there are plenty of other mutations that on the surface might seem like a superpower. Like having incredible height, similar to the almost nine foot tall Robert Wadlow, or the mutation that causes Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, which gives your skin hyperelasticity. But all of these come with a trade-off. In Robert Wadlow's case, his circulatory system couldn't sustain his ever-increasing height, and he died when he was 22. But there is some good that comes from these mutations. By looking at the genetics of people with sclerosteosis, doctors are trying to create a drug that increases bone growth to help patients that have osteoporosis, where their bones become brittle and fragile. And with CIP, researchers are trying to figure out a way to use this mutation as a painkiller. 
I think Stephen Peet says it best. The fact that this specific genetic mutation could be used to help people who are in extreme cases of pain is quite exciting. And we tend to say that someone is a superhero, or that someone is special because they can run faster, jump higher, or swim longer than an average person. But then you have people like Stephen Peet or Timothy Dreyer, or the people I saw every day at the Cancer Center who have such incredible strength. The fact that they continue to push and continue to live even with such immense odds. The fact that they hope that what they face, what they live with, might help others is incredible. It is super. To take the analogy one step further, these people with the help of doctors are using their superpower to help defeat villains like osteoporosis or chronic pain. In pop culture, we call mutants superheroes, and I think in real life, these people are no different. And as always, thanks for watching. And speaking of mutants and X-Men, Vsauce is holding a very special screening of X-Men Apocalypse here in Los Angeles. To find out more details, follow me on Twitter at Jake Rar for the date, the time, all that jazz. And if you are not in Los Angeles or you do not want to be in an enclosed space with me, you can win your very own screening of X-Men Apocalypse. All you gotta do is download the X-Men Movies app. There is a link in the top of the description. It is really cool and you can share your mutant power, look at behind the scenes and exclusive X-Men stuff, and you can even be friends with me on there. So what do you got to lose? Check it out. I'm gonna go and I would like to thank 20th Century Fox for this awesome opportunity. And yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna wink at you because my superpower is really making awkward endings to videos. <laughs>